hi guys and welcome back to my channel today we're doing another episode from our true crime series and today we are looking at the story of flabba Nguli habedi as well as sindisiwe mangale if you're new to the channel i do these type of videos every single week so definitely check out the playlist i have a couple of others that i've already done and i'll definitely be doing more in the near future now as usual i like having a disclaimer all the information that i will be narrating in this case i have accumulated from card documents as well as any other video clips that were recorded during the court proceedings so it is as accurate as i could get and without wasting any time let us dive into this video Flaba Nguli Habeli was born on the 19th of October 1977 in Orlando West in Soweto, Johannesburg. His family later moved to Alexandra where he spent most of his early years. In 1997, at the age of 20, Flabba would start a rap career and was part of a popular hip-hop group called Squatter Camp and they rocked the charts with songs like Omoya. A few years later, Flabba would get married to his childhood sweetheart Mpo and they would have a beautiful baby girl named Lesejo. It was around this time in 2006 when Flabba first met Sindisi Wengwele. She was 17 years old, he was 29 years old when they first met and Ba was still married to Mpo. Just a quick background about Cindy. Cindy C, where Precious Mangaile was born on the 20th of February in 1989. She was born in Newcastle in the KwaZulu-Natal region. She was the last born of four children, but unfortunately all three of her elder siblings passed away together with her mother in 2008. Her father passed away in 2015 with her grandmother, so she's the only remaining member of her immediate family that is still alive. Cindy would meet Flabba for the first time in 2006 when she was 17 years old. Flabba at the time, like I mentioned, was 29 years old. They briefly started a relationship and that relationship wouldn't last long. Cindy says that as soon as she found out that Habedi was married, she called the relationship quits and she stopped dating Habedi immediately. She would then start dating a tourist who had come to South Africa from Spain and they immediately gelled and they decided to move back to Spain together in 2009 when Cindy was 20 years old. So in 2009, Cindy moved to Spain with her new tourist boyfriend and would leave her father in South Africa. At the time, the father was the only remaining member of her family that was alive because in the previous year, her, um, her family had passed away. She moved to Spain and she says that she only spent as much as they were dating for a while before they moved to Spain. She said that when she got to Spain, her boyfriend started being abusive and clingy and very controlling. So she immediately broke up with him as well. And she decided that she does not want to come back to South Africa because of all the memories and the fact that her mother had just passed away. So she was going to move to Ireland and start a new life there. And she would see when she would come back to South Africa. Got to Ireland and registered at the Griffin College, which is a private college in Dublin, which is a city in Ireland. She started towards an economics degree. Cindy recalls calling Flebba in 2010 just after her breakup from the Spain guy, but they did not start a relationship at that point. It was just phone calls here and there. They just struck a friendship. Two years later, in 2013, when Cindy Siwe Mangele was in South Africa for a holiday, she decided to give Flebba a call and they met up and this is when their relationship rekindled and they started it all over again. Cindy describes her relationship with Flabba as being amazing as much as most of it was long distance because after that holiday, she went back to Dublin to study towards her economics degree and they were, most of their relationship was literally on the phone. They saw each other twice a year when she would come down for two weeks and spend time with him. But she says that the relationship was good and well, but the one thing that they mostly argued about was the fact that Flabba did not have a lot of money and he felt insecure about that. In court documents, Cindy mentioned that the main root of all their fights was about financial pressures and the fact that um, Flabba's career was not going well at the time that they candle their relationship so he kind of felt insecure and kind of 
felt like he could not provide the things that he presumed that Mangale wanted. The only huge fight that was not rooted in finances that they had was in 2014 when Mangale came back from Dublin for the last time and she says that she was at Flapper's house and basically her phone was still locked because she had just arrived back from Dublin so she could not use it so she asked Flapper to borrow her phone and she wanted to make a couple of phone calls and obviously Flapper did not find any problem with that so he gave her the phone and she did make the phone calls like she said but after that she decided to peruse his cell phone and he found a couple of messages that Flapper had sent through to a couple of, of girls and they came across as flirty as if he was in relationships with these people so Mangale decided that no she is leaving now Mangale was in Johannesburg visiting from Dublin so she did not have anywhere else to stay so she decided to catch a flight from Johannesburg to Cape Town to see her friends for the rest of the holiday and basically would go back to Dublin and never ever come back. Baba was obviously sad about this and he spoke to his mom to please speak to Mangale and basically apologize on her on his behalf so flabber's mother called cindy siwe who was now in cape town with her girlfriends and this is what happened i don't even know why i trusted your cheating ass anyways after all you cheated on lesiko's mom with me and god knows who else you make me sick i'll call tembela to come and get my stuff from your two-timing ass i really hope those hoes make you happy and have fun telling your daughter how you cheated on a woman that was nothing but nice to your family. I'm gonna go for my blood test tomorrow morning. You better pray you didn't give me anything. Mm, she came across some WhatsApp messages, flirty messages that he was sending. He was sending to and fro from another girl and um, she got angry and now Cindy wants to break up, is breaking up with him or something, but Cindy doesn't want to talk to him. And he was asking, he was pleading with me to please talk to her. And I said, okay, I'll phone her. I said, what happened, you know? You know, Gul is crying and he says, and then she said to me, look, mom, I'll be there in two weeks and I'll come and see you. Today's video is sponsored by Decorative and they're an online store based in Johannesburg, South Africa. They sell amazing art pieces and they send me these gorgeous pieces and you can literally get art pieces from as little as 129 rands 99. So definitely check them out. I'll have a link in the description box below. Thank you so much. Let's go back to the video. That was the last time I spoke to you. During her two weeks in Cape Town, Flabber would continue calling her and they decided to sort things out and therefore Cindy C would no longer go back to Dublin in January as planned and decided to extend her stay in South Africa and spend time with Flabber considering they had not spent any time together because of their fight. So Cindy went back to Johannesburg and things quickly went back to normal and they were nice and good and dandy and the couple was in love. Now, a few weeks later, Cindy Siwa Mangale and Flabba went out to a party at the Sands in Santon where Flabba would be performing on the night. Now, things quickly went south because they started arguing at the party because a couple of guys uh, were talking to Cindy, complimenting her beauty, basically type of kind of hitting on her flabber then told cindy that he did not like that she was entertaining these guys and basically it was disrespectful and the whole conversation turned to the fact that flabber felt like because he was not financially stable at the time cindy seemed to be entertaining all these guys who have money so she did not or was perhaps not happy with flabber and that was what the argument really really topped to Cindy then says that she decided to call a cab that she used and basically walked out of the Sands Club. And then a flabber followed her and he basically grabbed her and tried to pull her phone from her. Then says that to avoid this whole argument and the fact that they were fighting in public, she decided to go home with him and they then called it a night and went back home to Alex. 
Now, it's important for me to have a disclaimer from this point onwards to say that the version that I'm about to say now is Cindy's version. It's not necessarily Faber's version, and it's definitely not the version that the court decided was true. But it's important for me to just let you know what, Fla uh, what Cindy says happened from this point onwards. So Cindy says that they arrived in Alex at Flabber's family home and she got into his outside bedroom and locked it. Basically, she locked Flabber outside and then he tried to knock, basically begging her to open the door. Flabber would repeatedly knock on the door, calling for her to open the door. She then decided to open the door and she said that at this point, Flabber immediately pushed her to a point where um, she almost fell down. She says that he was so angry that the argument that had started at the San Santon had escalated even more. Cindy says that Flabber then slapped her and told her to leave the house or his room immediately. Then she proceeded to pack her bags. As she was about to get to the door, Cindy Siwa says that he then pulled her in again. The Siwa says that Flabber pulled her back inside the house again and then he pushed her onto the bed and he sat on top of her. So she says that Flabber proceeded to stab her with a knife telling her that he wants to fix her face. They then struggled for the knife and she says that she eventually overpowered him and got the knife from him and proceeded to go towards the door. This is allegedly her way of trying to escape. This is where things get really serious. Cindy Siwa says that he grabbed her once more and he shook her and she was scared. So she pushed him off once again. And this is when she noticed that his eyes were rolling and she looked at him and he started holding his chest. She then saw that she had accidentally hurt him and he immediately fell down. Basically, what Cindy Siwa Mangale is alleging is that she accidentally stabbed him with the knife that she took from him while he was trying to stab her. After Flabber fell down, Cindy Siwa quickly went inside the main house to try and call Luyanda, who is Flabber's younger brother. They called the ambulance and unfortunately it took a long time and Cindy basically performed CPR on him until the paramedics eventually came and they basically told her to stop because there's no need to continue because unfortunately Flabber Nguli Habedi had passed away. Immediately after they told her that, she recalls panicking and running to the room and breaking a bottle and attempting to commit suicide by stabbing herself with it. Unfortunately for her, that did not work and she would be arrested the very same day and would appear at the Alexandra Magistrate Court the very next Monday. The whole of South Africa mourned Flabber's death. Everyone was upset, literally, and just could not understand why anyone could kill him because even his ex-wife described him as such a humble person who would actually never lift his hand on anyone. It is, it is very strange. You know what, I'm not going to say a lot because at the end of the day I wasn't in the room when they were together. But according to me, he, he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't violent at all. Not at all. Okay, like you asked for the 20 years, for the 20 years of my life I never experienced anything that will say like, wow. I almost went, I almost did what she has done. Flabber was buried in a beautiful ceremony that most of the South Africans watch live on television. And his daughter spoke so beautifully about him at the ceremony. The court did not accept Cindy Siwe Mangale's version of events and she was found guilty of murdering Flabber. And in other countries in Africa, they simply take you to the beach and they order the firing squad to to fire on you for murder. So it's a serious offense in any society. You plunged the knife you had in your hand into the chest of the deceased to an extent that the force you used broke his rib and the knife penetrated to the lungs and and as a result, he died. If you could rise, please. It is my unpleasant task 
to impose the following sentence on you. You are hereby sentenced to a period of 12 years imprisonment. Now, obviously, most South Africans were not happy with the sentence because 12 years in South Africa basically means you could be out on parole after six years. This means that she is due for parole possibly next year. While in prison, Cindy Siwe Mangele also completed a degree, and this is what she had to say about that. I'm doing this mostly for those people. You know, there's a lot of people that were hurt by the, the, the incident that took place and my journey for me to be here. There's a lot of wrongs that I need to right with the people. I've heard a lot of people with the, the situation that I'm in right now. So this is me trying to make up for the wrongs that I've done. And I'm also, I also want to come out and be a better person, do better, live a better life. And yeah, I'm very passionate about education. I was studying even before I was incarcerated. I was doing my honors in business and um, I'm just taking it from where where I was and continuing with that because I've got little siblings that look up to me, cousins and nephews and nieces. I've got a grandchild also that looks up to me. I'm a granny that looks up to me. So I don't want to only have Cindy with the negative stories. There has to be positives to Cindy. You know, this. I don't want to be Cindy the bandit. I want to be Cindy the advocate. You know, it, it's, it's possible to make a right from a from a bad decision or from a mistake that, 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 that may have occurred. But now I want to make a right from that. And on that note, we have come to the end of this video. Please make sure that you comment down below and let me know what you think about this case. You know that I love that. And if you're new to the channel, please make sure that you watch the other videos on this specific playlist. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next upload. Bye.